Welcome back to another video by yours truly, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to be reacting to the updated 2.1 tier list after Acheron's release that Pridewind has now uh, presented us. Now, I do want to put a quick disclaimer in there. Keep in mind, I always have to say this because you have people who will like try and discredit Pridewind for purely subjective takes, okay? Which my takes that I'm going to be given, whether I agree or disagree with them, are also subjective. So regardless of whether I make a convincing argument on a character or not, keep in mind, guys, this is not to discredit pride win, nor should you do that. We all have our own thoughts based off of our own insights of this game. I will always mention that before I go into this tier list so that nobody will to try to prevent people from going and just like trying to slander the pride win website. I go to these guys for AFK journey. I've gone, I've gone to these guys for reverse 1999 and I go to them for Honkai star rail. And I did back in the gap when it was Genshin impact. So they're a very reliable, uh, universal, uh, website to go to when you just need some good guidance on how characters perform on a general basis. That said, I do disagree with a number of the things that they've put on this tier list. I'm expecting to see preservation units move up in value because of Acheron's release. Acheron affected a lot of character's value. I'm expecting preservation units to be moved up. Uh, if Weld is still in the B tier, I'm going to personally get in contact with Weld and tell him to send a gravitational disintegration bomb to obliterate Pridewind and just completely disregard everything I said about keeping the peace. All right. Nah, we not we're not doing that. That said, we'll react to that. We'll also talk about pure fiction and then that'll wrap it up. Let's go ahead and get into it. One more quick little disclaimer before we jump straight into it. I just want to make sure that they're not being misrepresented. Uh, this is important context to how they evaluate their tier list. I did go over it in my previous tier list video. We're not going to go over it again. You can pause this, take a look at it, read through it so that you understand and uh, have a better comprehension as to how they go about evaluating particular characters. One uh, one good example is sustain. It's, it's based off of characters who are capable of keeping the team alive with their abilities. So it's... That is important because somebody like, I'd say Gallagher, Gallagher is a good example. Gallagher does more than just keep the team alive. He increases break effect performance. He breaks shields. He can even do a little bit of damage. But based off of this, they're only evaluating his ability to keep the team alive. So that's something that could be confusing. And you'll be like, why the hell is Gallagher somewhere? Because that's one of the things I disagree with immediately. But Pride One doesn't evaluate sustainers based off of what they're doing outside of sustaining. So that's just one little example. But with that said, let's go ahead and get into it. Um, sustain. I see they're still adamant about not moving up Scooby Doo to the value of Fushwan. Again, I could not disagree more here because there are simply teams where Scooby Doo is going to perform better than Fushwan. But that's why I brought up that sustain scenario because I think it's easily, it's not even an argument that. Scooby Doo can't sustain better than Fu Xuan. Then again, that auto cleanse against characters like Kafka is wild, but Fu Xuan's tankiness is just so impenetrable that, you know, you can make the argument that she's still a tier above uh, Scooby Doo in terms of sustaining. I mean, it, it really is a toss up because Scooby Doo's heals are actually just as broken as Lorcha's. They really are. If you know what you're doing with her, she just heals a lot. So I can get this placement. But in terms of taking away and saying fuck pride wins sustain evaluation, just in terms of sustainer outside of sustaining, Scooby Doo is absolutely better than Fu Xuan. She's better than Fu Xuan for Kafka, Black Swan, Jing Liu, and Bible Lune, and Dr. Ratio, all of those units. That's a lot of meta units that you're going to use one sustainer over the other to get more performance out of them. No, oh, I mean, it is what it is. Lorcha, I'm telling you, he's permanent S tier. He's an amazing sustainer that isn't broken nor, uh, over or like overhyped or anything he's like properly rated there uh his sustain is just spectacular uh anyways this is wild to me go back to that sustain mention it makes sense that they're saying that she uh heals better than gallagher but i even disagree with that gallagher pretty much is lorcha when he pops his ult he heals your whole team when you when you attack the uh the besotted state person that you've inflicted it on he quite literally heals your whole team and it lasts for some turns. Whereas Lynx, you see so dependent on keeping your team alive with just her ult that outside of her ult, her skill only hits one person and it's just kind of booty. I, I, so I have my free to play account now. So I have a little bit more knowledge with her actual performance. And let me tell you, Lynx is a B tier healer. She is. In fact, she's not even, she's nowhere near Bailu's capability of keeping the team alive. She just has that team wide cleanse, which does contribute to survivability and sustaining. But the heals on Lynx aren't the best. They really aren't. I think Gallagher should be A tier. 
again, disregarding their sustained evaluation, Gallagher should be A tier bare minimum just because not only can he do what Lorcha does on a, on a, you know, not as potent of a level, but he's also going to open up the potential for break effect comps in the future and down the road and in now in the real time to do much better, especially on a free to play level. So I think he should be A tier. These two should have moved up tiers, in my personal opinion. March still being in the C tier with Acheron releasing is crazy. Uh, Japar not being in the A tier with Acheron releasing is crazy. Uh, they're literally some. They, they're better than Lynx. They're better than Natasha. They're better than Bailu for Acheron. And yes, when a character releases, it does affect the entirety of placement of characters on a tier list. Uh, which is one of the things I want to talk to you about with pride when if you're watching this video I know you guys watch my stuff a lot. Um, you can maybe you like maybe you can incorporate in like a little image inside of these these squares of a character that makes that character perform better and then put them in another tier list like move them up. So case in point Japard is in the A tier but then you'd have a little picture of Acheron right here with maybe a symbol that explains that and that's why he's in that tier list but you take Acheron away, it goes back down to the B tier type of ordeal. I don't think evaluating character sustains off of just keeping the team alive. I don't think that's a good met a good metric or a good uh, consensus to go about the tier list because I literally don't recommend pulling sustains unless they do more than sustain. And it's kind of hard for me to like give good evaluations of characters that are sustainers when they can do more than sustain. Hopefully that makes sense, it's just my feedback. But I think March should go up to B tier and Japart should go up to A tier, thanks to Acheron's mere presence. All right, coming up here, I've told y'all this before, Ron May's value is just higher than every other amplifier in the game. I think there. this is another thing I think you guys should do. You should consider a God role on each, uh, you know, category. Specialist, there hasn't been one yet. There's not a God role specialist. There's not a God role sustainer either, but there is a God role amplifier and there is now a God role damage dealer. I think Ron May should be up here in a, in a, in a realm of her own. And I think this S plus tier should be held by her and Ting Yun. That's my opinion. That's a hot take, but I'm telling you, Ting Yun's value is just insane. That's my personal opinion on the Ting Yun thing. I'm not going to fight people about it. From where I stand, Ting Yun is better than Branya. She's more universal than Branya, and certain some teams like just need her like desperately. Case in point, that's Imbiber Lune. He needs the Ting Yun. You can use Branya or Ting Yun on a Jing Liu composition, but Doctor Ratio's best in slot definitely has a Ting Yun on that team as well. Jing Yuan has a Ting Yun on his team as well. So yeah, I mean you can make the argument that Sila, but she can use an either or. I think these two, Ting Yun and her, should be an S plus tier. Branya mains are going to fight me on Branya not being in there too, but sure. Put those three in the S plus tier, and there's no way on God's green fucking earth that Pella isn't in the S tier after Acheron's release. This is nasty work, Pride. Like, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? She's literally best in slot for Acheron. I already thought she should be in the S tier prior to Acheron, but now that she's in here and you still didn't move her up, like, bro, what do you have against like nerdy girls? What's going on here, big guy? Huh? One of y'all, get it together. There's no way you still think Pella's in the A tier, okay? We got Pella and Silver Wolf S tier. We got Ting Yun, Branya, and, and uh, Sparkle. Now, see, now, now I'm in the problem. Now, now I'm battling myself here. Because Ting Yun and uh, Branya aren't as valuable as Sparkle either. So you can keep them three down here with a Pella in there as well. And then Sparkle is in the S plus tier by herself. And then Ron May's in the God tier by herself. I think that's literally the best way to go about it. Ron May God tier, Sparkle S plus tier, and then Branya, Silver Wolf, Ting Yun, Pella all in the same tier. Yeah, that, that's how I would go about it. Now, I'll be honest, I think Silver Wolf is dog shit at E0, but y'all are so adamant on thinking she, like thinking Silver Wolf belongs in the S and Pella doesn't, it just, it really makes me fucking cringe. It does, but you know, that's all we're gonna spend on it. I don't know what I've said about Asta in the past being in the B tier. I think I might've said something about, uh, it's not that Asta's not good, but it's just that the other alternatives are so much better, which is true. On a non on a sustainless comp though, Asta's performance as an amplifier for the dot comp is literally meta. If you don't believe me, go and watch my dot uh, run where I zero cycle with Asta, Ron May, Kafka Black Swan, and it's not just she doesn't just provide value to them too. She's good with Jing Yuan as well. Don't sleep on her for Jing Yuan. He goes three times with her, uh, but Asta. 
her value and the ability to make these two go three times due to her ridiculous speed enhancement on top of DDD, she's an A tier. And that's why I was trying to tell you there should be a God role because then it would make much more sense. Ron May up there on her own because nobody provides her value. Sparkle, then you got those four with Pella up there. And then you have Asta in the A tier by her lonesome because she really is an A tier sustainer. Not to mention, I mean, uh, buffer. Not to mention she's completely fucking free to play. I think that should play a little bit of a role in terms of a value of a character as well. Uh, this should be her and Hanya should both be in the same tier, B tier. Yeah. And then that's my only disagreement there. Uh, Kafka, Black Swan. Black Swan should have moved up to S plus tier with Acheron's release. She is absolutely insane with Acheron. This girl is literally best in slot on two different Acheron team compositions. Not to mention, I already told you she should be there because she's a specialist. Kafka can't be an S plus without Black Swan. I don't care what y'all say. You can't convince me otherwise. They already should have been up there. But now that Acheron's released, Black Swan should absolutely be in the S plus tier. Fuck your opinion. Yeah, look at me. Fuck your opinion. Not pride win to the guy who thinks he's going to try and convince me that she shouldn't be in there. All right, moving on. Welt in the B tier again. Wow. Welt, I give you the green light, brother. Drop it. Drop the black hole on the whole website. They will know your name. I'm in the middle of the story, and I and you big dicked Acheron so hard, bro. Like, I can't believe this blasphemy that they're doing to you, bro. Don't worry, brother. I'll keep fighting the good fight for you. They'll listen. Don't they'll listen one day. Hey, whoever's making this wealth decision, with whoever's doing this slander, respectfully, go fuck yourself. All right. All right. Moving on. Fire Trailblazer should be A tier and you should put a little mini picture of Acheron next to the Fire Trailblazer's picture so that people understand the only reason Fire Trailblazer is A tier is because of Acheron. I, yeah, about it. I still think Su Shang shouldn't be in the C tier. That shit is wild. B tier, bare minimum. Um... Coming up over here, Acheron is absolutely in a realm of her own, okay? Guys, it's the first character where I'm just breaking a million damage, like, no problem. It, it just makes no sense. She's, she's not even just, like, broken in terms of damage dealing. She's broken for Simulated Universe. Like, she's broken for the upgraded versions of Simulated Universe, too. She's going to be good for Pure Fiction, although I'm talking out my ass, uh, admittedly, because I haven't even played her in Pure Fiction. But I know she's going to be, because her technique continues to give her a stack and activate as an AoE in every single wave. So there's no way she's not good in Pure Fiction, either. But you know what? I think um, she absolutely out-DPSs every other DPS in the game. No, no doubt about it on all levels, well levels, budget levels and free to play levels. With that said, she deserves a God tier spot for herself and Bybri Lune and Jing Liu should remain an S plus tier by their lonesome. And I think this is fair. I think I've done a fantastic job evaluating these characters. Um, I'll let y'all make it on Blade. But I do think my boy need to be up in the S tier. All right. All right. Nah, nah, look, I think my boy need to be up in the S tier. Argenti against physical scenarios. I think he deserves to be in the S tier, but I did I did take a peek here, and y'all did say characters that focus on dealing direct damage and can perform their role unhindered by the enemy type, enemy element, or team composition. And you know what? Argenti falls off hard as a motherfucker if he ain't fighting a, a physical unit, so I do understand that, but that's also why I think Blade should be in the S tier, because Blade, I don't, I don't give a damn what elements Blade is going up against. Blade, is, he, he gonna find a way, bro. Bro's gonna find a way to make it happen. Uh, fair game. I still think y'all are sleeping on Himiko. I think she belongs in the S tier right next to Topaz. That team is a dynamic duo that's really strong. But other than that, pretty fair game here, guys. Uh, moving on to Pure Fiction. Okay, let's see what we got going on here. Uh, sustain, sustain. Uh, I think Fu Xuan should... Ah, uh, you know what? I talked about this last time. If you build Fu Xuan for damage and Lorcher for damage, I actually think all three of them are actually spectacular sustainers in pure fiction. Uh, I don't think any sustainers, now that I think about it, deserve to be an S plus tier. I think all sustainers should be an S tier. They're not S plus. They're not like they're not better than just going with another unit that can deal even more damage because you can run this mode and have somebody die and still get, you know, full full completion. So I think all sustainers maybe it's a hot take, should be an S tier. And they're not worthy of the S plus tier unless they're a uh, Zesterine who's going to deal damage while also sustaining. Uh, my personal opinion there. Uh, let's see, down here, yeah, that's fair. Yep, that's exactly the, the same logic I was trying to use up here. Nobody should go in this slot because they're all dog shit. Gallagher, though, increasing the break effect of your team. I haven't played them yet, so I'm talking out my ass here, okay, but... 
I think if he's increasing the break effect of your team, he pro and he deals damage, he should probably be A tier. There's no way. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. God damn it, I just thought about this. How the fuck is Gallagher in the same tier as Lynx, Japard, and Bailu? When he literally deals damage, good break effect damage, and he increases the break effect of your team. There's just no way. he. It doesn't make sense logically, right, one? And it makes zero sense. He has to be a, a tier higher than them, bare minimum. I already told y'all, I think March 7th uh, should be high. Like, what, bro? What the f? Okay, you have to change this. Okay, yeah, because this doesn't make sense. You shouldn't be evaluating sustainers on keeping teams alive in pure fiction. You really shouldn't. You got to change that up. That one, y'all like, uh, y'all are keeping it a bit too general, in my personal opinion. Uh, this is fine. Everything in here seems to be fine. I actually think Asta and Pure Fiction should be S tier because she manipulates turn value and turn value is very fucking important in Pure Fiction. The more you go, the better. I think she should be an S plus tier or S tier. And Pella also. Yeah, I think Pella should also be an S tier. Her AOE ult can contribute. Other than that, I respect it. I think they should just be next to each other. But Black Swan absolutely is a better value than Kafka. Now that I've, I've experienced it, her, her dot explosions are just broken for pure fiction. Um, His delay has been viewed as a negative, but I I still think his AOE value puts him in A tier. Well, and now I haven't played Acheron in pure fiction yet, but I know good and goddamn well that broken ass ult separates her from Sila. Okay, I'm not even gonna like go off of personal experience. I'm just gonna know, I'm just gonna tell you straight up, there's no way you're looking me dead in my eyes and saying that she belongs in the same tier as Jing Liu and Sila for fucking pure fiction. I uh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Y'all are smoking dick, bro. What what's going on over here? All right, now Herta. Oh wow. I think y'all changed that. She's in a league of her own now. That's fair. Herta's pretty broken, but I think Himiko. You know what? I've said this before. I said I think Himiko should be up there with Herta, but I go back to y'all's evaluation and I respect it. Again, enemy element or team composition. If Himiko's not going up against a fire element, her value does go down. Whereas Herta still pops so I don't know. I don't know. I still think Himiko should be with Herta, in my personal opinion, guys. What did y'all comment down below? Let me think about that. I think she should still be up there with Herta. These two make perfect sense. Absolutely. They're not even touching Himiko and Herta's value. Uh, Argenti, if he goes up against physical scenarios, yeah, sure. But if he doesn't, his value goes down. These two's value pretty much remains the same because she still can trigger her follow-up attacks if your other units are breaking shields, which is why her value still remains high. Uh, but these two, actually, their value does go down. Now, Acheron, I'm pretty damn sure once I test her in this MOC, or Pure Fiction, I'm probably going to evaluate her as an S tier. Yeah, we'll see. We'll keep that. I, I don't agree with this just off of surface level comprehension, but maybe, maybe they're on to something there. All right, other than that, that's going to wrap up my thoughts for the Pride Win tier list. Keep in mind, it's all subjective with, with good logic behind it, but everybody has their own opinions and um, I can respect them to a degree. Not everybody's opinion. Some of y'all's opinions ain't worth a quarter in the phone booth, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, much love, peace, love, and happiness, and I'll catch y'all on the flip side.